button. Hey, what's up, guys? Christian Brindle here, and I am back with another video of somebody doing big time things in the insurance industry. Um, I'm here with our very own Celeste McGrath um, of CBIS. Um, many of you that have done business with our organization over the years probably know Celeste. If you've ever been an agent with us for, for quite some time, you probably worked with Celeste at one point or another. Celeste is um, an agent internally within CBIS. And, you know, she's doing incredibly well. She's been an agent for, I don't want to spoil any introductions, but I would say eight, nine months, something like that. Does that sound right? About that, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, C Celeste has um, written a lot of business, you know, she's doing incredibly well and, you know, she's really, really starting to rock and roll now. And, um, you know, one thing that I wanted to do was kind of bring her in and have a conversation. I feel like a lot of people um, in our industry today really kind of bag on LOA roles, right? LOA roles, licensed only agent roles, for those of you that aren't familiar with what that means, um, and, and essentially being an agent within an established agency. And um, there's so many people I know in our space that, you know, just are, are extremely successful in an LOA role. And Celeste has, you know, done incredibly well. Um, in the short time she's been in this role. So I really wanted to kind of bring her in and kind of hear from her on kind of her experience in 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 this type of role and also, um, you know, just her success in such a short time as an agent. Um, so first off, Celeste, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks for feeling like my input is valuable. <laughs> of course, of course, it always is. Um, so let's start from the beginning, right? Let's talk a little bit about, I, I guess, I, let's talk a little bit about how you really got into the insurance industry, right? Where did it all start for you? Okay. So I actually started kind of on the outside as a, a vendor, um, per se, to agents um, with a software company. And that software was developed for agents to kind of reach more prospects, but it wasn't exclusive to insurance. So they focused on a couple of different industries. Um, at first in that company, I did the billing and accounting, and then I got transitioned into more of a social media management role. And um, that kind of put me front and center with agents all over the country. So. Um, I started attending lots of Medicare conferences, and I got to know a lot of different agents um, in all levels of their career. And so um, I made a good amount of friends over the year and a half that I was in that role. Um, I interviewed agents, including you. That's um, right. It still lives on YouTube, YouTube by the way. <laughs> still lives on YouTube for anybody that wants to go find it. <laughs> Christian, side note, Christian was the only agent Medicare agent that would do a second interview with me <laughs> when I was in that role. Everybody else was like, meh. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was instructed to basically use that, that platform to um, basically sell the software. You know, what has the software done for you? What have you gained with the software? But I, and this is probably why I was let go after a year and a half in that position, but I tried more to give value to whoever was watching the video. So like I, I delved into Medicare itself and, and how the software might actually benefit an agent and, um, and things like that. And so because it's not always just about the software, right? It's about improving as an agent. And I wanted to provide value rather than a sales pitch. So yeah, absolutely, I, that's what I, you know, that was my goal in that position. Um, but so after COVID ended, I got laid off and decided that the Medicare industry was really where I wanted to be. Um, so I called up Christian because... <laughs> What good are connections if you can't connect, right? That's right. And I pled my case. Now, I don't live anywhere near Utah. In fact, 
I live on the other side of the country. So I really had to, you know, promise the moon and back if Christian took a chance on me. And he decided that it was worth a chance. So um, he, you know, made me the agent relations specialist. And, the, you know, that, that got me more, you know, one more step closer. And so that's how I got started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, one thing that's kind of so interesting about it all is like, you know, we got to know each other, right. Pre previous to you were, you know, being a part of the company, yeah. um, when you were with prospect boss at different events, right. As a vendor, we kind of got to, you know, know each other then, of course, you know, doing the interviews, like you mentioned, you know, got to know each other a little bit then. Um, and I remember at the time, you know, I never, I had never, I'd never had anybody on the team that was, was virtual. You know, I'd never had anybody on the team that wasn't in the office. So for me, it was a, it was, it was kind of a scary thing. Just, just, just you because were very it was hesitant. I was, you were like, I was uh, really looking for someone in office. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, you know, and what I, what I can say is, you know, for anybody that's watching this, um, you know, Celeste has been a breath of fresh air for the business ever since she started, even when, when she was back in the agent relations and contracting role, um, you know, she's, you know, the agents loved dealing with her. The agents loved, you know, kind of interacting with her and her working with them. I remember when she, yeah, had... yes. And, and... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I remember when she moved out of the role, you know, at first the agents were, were, were sad. They were upset. A lot of them were, um, you know, because she did such a great job. And now in her current role, you know, she, the clients love her, you know, so everywhere she goes, every, you know, um, there's a, there's a positive experience with everybody that she works with. And, um, you know, we, we, we love having you here. So kind of transitioning into, you know, back in, back into kind of the, the story a little bit. So I remember when you first started in the agent relations role, you told me you're like, I think like it was early on. You told me, you know, I think at some point I probably want to be an agent. What made you want to be an agent? Where did where does that where did that desire um, come from? Well, you know that that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my many duties as um, you know agent relations specialist was, you know, one of the kind of side duties that I had was editing Christian's YouTube videos. And um, so I, I joke with him all the time that it's his own fault. Because when I originally decided, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to be an agent. I was going to go independent. And <laughs> I literally, you remember this, I cried when I told you. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but because I, I didn't want to leave the company, I'd finally found kind of where I belonged, but at the same time, like I wanted those opportunities too. And in editing the videos, like I really got kind of a behind the scenes look at this is the potential mm -hmm. and I, it was kind of already a nugget in my mind for several years at that point. And so I, I just finally decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And Christian was very gracious. He was like, okay, because I, I gave you like, what, six months notice. A ton of notice. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm getting, I'm getting my license done. And the big thing though was like, I didn't want to drop you just in the middle of summit planning and everything else. And so I was like, I'll stay through the summit. Which, and, which, um, which, which I really appreciated, you know, that was, <laughs> that was very, that was very kind of you, you know, cause it's a crazy time, crazy time it here. Is. Super crazy, especially around here. So, um, but then Christian was like, um, I have thought a lot about this and this is what I'm willing to offer if you will stay in house and be an agent for me. And I discussed it with my husband, but to be honest, I had already made up my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's 
you get an offer and it's beyond what you're looking at, especially in the first year, two years, three years as an independent. And, and there was, there was, you know, even my husband was like, you would be stupid not to take that offer. And, um, so that's, I mean, yeah, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. One, two, stay with the organization, but two, to just have the, the training under you. Cause that, you know, I can, I can do the university and, you know, I can do things like that, but I mean, let's face it, having one on one contact access to you is a much bigger perk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I appreciate that. That's very kind. That's very kind of you to say. Um, <laughs> um, I think, you know, I, I remember when, you know, the kind of this whole transition period was kind of happening, you know, I remember, cause I remember at first we had a conversation about you staying with the company and being agent internal, just as I, just as an idea, just kicking it around mm -hmm. a little bit. I think you were still trying to decide kind of what you wanted to do in terms of, you know, as being an agent. And, and at, at first I was like, same pig headedness of I had at the beginning, probably I was like, I was like, well, I don't know if we need a, an, 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 an internal agent virtual. that's, that's <laughs> virtual. <laughs> Same mistake I probably would have. I'm almost made the first time, um, but I didn't. And um, I joked with you when you when you told me if I, or asked if I wanted to be an internal agent. I was like, "You gonna buy me a house in Utah?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the goal is that if in, the goal is for you to be able to buy your own house, that's what we want, right? Um, but. So, so yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's kind of dive into this a little bit about LOA roles. I mentioned kind of at the beginning, right? LOA roles get, get a bad rap from a lot of people in the industry. And then certainly there's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's 10,000 different ways an LOA role can be structured, right? There's, there's yeah. LOA roles that heavily, heavily benefit the agency and the person that's in the LOA role, just, there's not much room for growth. There's not much room for, you know, opportunity or anything like that. And then there's others where, you know, I think like our LOA role that you're in is probably as lucrative as it gets, you know, in, in, in the industry right now. So, and there's a spectrum of everything else in between. So, but, but what has your experience been, right? It's, it's, it, we're, we're coming up on almost a year since we made, since you made the transition, not quite there, but we're getting close to a year since you made the transition into the, into the internal agent role. Um, what has your experience been in an LA in, in an in an LOA role with a relatively fast growing organization like ours? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So for me, being an LOA agent, especially while really delving heavily into learning Medicare, um, it's been just a whirlwind of knowledge and skill building that not everyone gets the benefit of. So I can concentrate on learning the product and the sales skills without worrying about how to also learn how to build a website and mm -hmm. learn how to do Facebook ads and, you know, also how to make connections in the community. Um, so that's the, that's what I love about being in LOA is I've had time. And of course, I mean, I'm only, I'm less than a year into this. So there's still lots and lots and lots and lots for me to learn. Um, but I've, I've had the benefit of learning things without a ton of other business ownership struggles and worries on top of everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I've always kind of looked at it like there's, there's pros and cons to both LOA and being independent. You know, like everybody talks about how great, what I've always noticed is like in Facebook groups and, you know, online communities where, where agent independent agents do kind of bag on an LOA role. Most of the ones that are the loudest about it make less than a lot of LOAs do. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it, it's, it's very true. You know, they're, they're the loudest ones and they're like, 
I would never be an LOA for a company. I would never do that. And then, you know, like on the flip side, you know, behind the scenes, they're, they're doing like 20 apps a year. You know what I mean? Like they're, yeah. they're not really doing all that well. And maybe they, maybe they would have a better opportunity for growth if they were in an LOA spot, you know, cause they, cause they, they, they wouldn't have to worry about a lot of those things that you talked about. Um, are there any perks that you've kind of noticed? Cause, cause you, you know, the independent side, I think really well as well, because you know, being in the agent relations role that you were in, um, you know, working so closely with me and the company and, you know, the summit, of course, you know, where you worked with agents with prospect boss, right. Prior to being with us. So you have yeah. a lot of interaction and experience and just knowledge about the independent world. Like, I think, you know, it, you know what it is, you know what it entails, you know what it looks like. Are there any perks of being an LOA that maybe someone might not be thinking about, you know what I mean? Cause I, I think it's almost like a lot of agents are almost programmed to think that being in that type of role is just horrible, bad, no matter what. And, and don't get me wrong. I think there's certainly positions out there, like I mentioned earlier, that, that aren't good, you know, it just isn't a good situation for, for the agent. But, um, talk about that a little bit, if you would, about maybe some perks of being in LA, LOA versus independent that people aren't necessarily thinking about if it's the right role right so i mean you've got your the uh, for me personally the biggest perk to being an loa agent is you have a base salary most and that's not all places i guess because i have seen you know people say oh i'm a i'm a captive agent or i'm an loa but and I only get, you know, $25 per app or, you know, something silly like that. But if you're with a, a good, reputable agency that isn't just looking out for themselves, um, the biggest perk of being LOA versus independent is that I know my bills are still going to be paid. Yep. Regardless of if I have a bad month on writing apps. So that base salary is what I base my monthly budget on. And then I'd never, and this is just a personal preference for myself, but I never count on what my commissions may or may not be because I would drive myself crazy trying to figure out, okay, for this sale, I should get this much commission um, this month. Um, it, it, you know, and so my commissions are, just kind of icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. And some months that icing is sky high and some months it's just enough to pull me out of whatever hole I've dug in myself in on overspending on my budget. Um, but I remember, especially like my first or second month, um, my commission check came in and every bit of it was used just to pay off extra that I had spent over my budget and that was that was kind of a thank god for this moment because had i not one had i not had my base salary and two had i not had that commission check come in you know we would have put ourselves in a stupid position um and so, yeah, for me, the biggest thing is you have your base salary, you have your percentage, whatever the percentage is that, you know, is worked out with your agency, um, that percentage of the commission. And, you know, if you have a really, really good month, then that extra on commissions, it, it, it makes a huge difference. And I don't have to worry about, um, you know, spending, um, you know, every bit of a commission that I get in, you know, turning it right around into marketing. I don't have to worry about it. Yep. That. Like, that is my money. I get to use it for a trip with my kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think to me, I've always looked at it like, you know, when you're a business owner, you know, there's so much expense that comes with that right? right and 
it's, it's a lot, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes it is kind of nice to not have to, to worry about that. You know, like when you get commission, you know, there, there isn't overhead for you to have to worry about, you know, everything is provided for you, whether it be, you know, of course, systems, CRMs, tools, um, leads, right. Leads is probably the biggest leads one. Is big thing. <laughs> leads is a big one. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, like I, I mentioned earlier about agents that really beat up on LOA roles, but like someone might say, okay, why, why would someone potentially write more or make more money in an LOA role? A good one, of course, than they would as an independent. I'm not saying this is, I'm not saying it's everybody by any means, but if you look at the numbers, right, of independent agents, the vast majority of them fail out, don't go anywhere, 90%, 90, 95%, you know? Um, and so I think a big reason to that is because, you know, they, 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 they can't get in front of enough people. They can't get enough lead flow at the beginning. Right. I think that's just death to a business. And then, like you said, people have bills to pay. Right. Um, and in an LOA role, right. You essentially have all the leads you need. It's provided for you. And, um, yeah. And, you know, so that's why I say like, you know, someone in a Facebook group, they're beating up on an LOA role, but they did 20 apps last year, but an LOA did, you know, 150 or 200 or something like that, you know, um, it's because they had so many more opportunities, you know, so like, you know, in an independent role, I, I said this to someone the other day that was like struggling in the business. They, they did a call with, it wasn't the, actually the other day, it was probably a few months ago, but, you know, I had a call with somebody, agent they're struggling in the business and they're considering going in an LOA role, but they just couldn't wrap their minds around it because of everything we talked about. And I told them, I was like, they're, they're like, they're like, I make more as an independent. I'm like, you make more per sale. I'm like, but a higher percentage of zero is still zero. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, so if you can make more sales easier and you can just worry about sales, do you think you'd make more? They were like, maybe so. Of course they, they weren't looking at going with us. It was more just a consulting call, but um, but yeah, I think that's, that's really something that I think a lot of agents, you know, need to understand. And, and I think, I think it's harder to break out as an independent today than it was when I started. That's for sure. You know, there's more rules, there's more regulation. I think marketing is more complicated. Lead, lead flow is more complicated. Um, so yeah, I think, I think this is a really important conversation. Um, well, and being in you know an, an established agency there's less that you have to do also for yeah. marketing and, and gaining new business because you're getting referrals left and right and you know so as for example as your loa agent you know those referrals get pushed to me yeah and you know that those are you know nine times out of ten those are easy sales because yep. they you know they're referrals and, you know, if you have to build your business from scratch, it's going to be a few years before you start seeing referrals come in like that. And so gaining the momentum, you know, coming on as an LOA to a, a fast growing agency, you're just kind of put right into that momentum swing. And so you're not having to build from zero. You're right there head first. Yeah, I, th I think that's a great point. I think that's a great point. Um, there's one that came in today, a referral. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so like it's 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 constant. It's just as constant. And and um, yeah, I think I think that's a great point. Um, talk a little bit about advice you'd give. Let's say there's somebody that's watching this, and they maybe they're new. Maybe they just got their license, or maybe they've been independent for six months or twelve months, and they're just like, I'm not going anywhere, right? Like I'm not going anywhere. I might have to quit. You know. What advice would you give to somebody who's who's struggling on that, or, or maybe they're brand new and they're just trying to decide what their best role is for them? Like, what advice would you give on on them help deciding what role is best for them and finding that what works for them? Yeah, so I would say um, take a look at your finances. Can you, you know, Christian is famous for saying. You can either spend time or you can spend money. Mm -hmm. And so can you realistically put X amount of dollars 
for X amount of hours into marketing, working without putting your family and your household at risk. Um, if not, <laughs> then I would seriously consider an LOA position. Um, but specifically with someone in the industry that can train you correctly how to do things ethically, how, you know, that can, that can answer your questions on a dime. I started going independent, but, you know, within a month, I was already a thousand dollars in and I hadn't re written a single policy. So, you know, and that was, a lot of that was getting, re you know, getting ready. That was taking my test. That was, you know, getting my license, but you I know, spent, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spent a lot of time and money already, like designing, printing, mailing. Like I sent out like two thousand mailers in my town, and I hadn't gotten a single phone call. And so, you know. A thousand dollars in and not writing a single policy that about broke us at that time. Like I was, I was swimming in it at that point. I was like, okay, this is not at all what I was hoping for, what I was expecting. Um, and we really didn't have any kind of a nest egg, nothing, you know, like a starting, okay, we've got five thousand dollars to spend or we've got ten thousand dollars to spend to really get this business off the ground. And yeah. so if you really, and there, you know, there's business loans and things like that, but we didn't want it. We were already in enough debt. <laughs> we didn't need to add that to it. So, you know, if you don't have the money or the time, then LOA is a, a really good option. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think another thing too, that's super relevant with that is like when you first get started too, you don't know anything, right? Like there's so much that you need to learn. I've always said, what, what do you, do you remember the time frame I told you about? I'm like, how long I thought you'd have to be in the trenches of selling before it would be like, okay, I'm starting to figure this out. It started to click. Do you remember that time frame? A year or more? I, yeah, I would say like, depending on the person, six months to a year, you yeah. know, but like in your first 30 days, of course, you know, two or three months, there's so much you don't know. And, 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 you know, think about it from someone that just got their license, right? You, you probably knew a lot more than a normal person would have even, you know, in that scenario. And it's, it's a lot though, you know, it takes a lot yeah. to learn that what you need to know and, you know, how to do a presentation, how to explain things, how to check things, you know, um, as an agent, you know, even when you do get in front of people, you make mistakes at the beginning, everybody does, you yeah. know, and it can cost you a sale sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, all of that I think is super, super relevant, um, in kind of, kind of thinking about that, right. Is like you, you either give time or money, like you said, you know, you either give time or money and you have to have one of those resources available to really be able to, to grow the business. Yeah. And at that time I didn't have either because I was still working full time in the agent department for you. And so I had you know, a few hours after work that I could, you know, spend time. And I had, you know, my, my salary, but my salary went to paying my bill. So I didn't have, I didn't have money and I didn't have time. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, when you have neither of those things, it makes it even harder. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Agreed. So, I mean, um, I had, me and my kids were the ones stuffing envelopes with those mailers, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was up yeah. till midnight tracking down leads and, you know, trying to find, you know, oh, I can go talk to this dental office and I can go talk to this uh, assisted living facility. And, you know, but when you've only got a few hours a day, it really hinders how much you can do without spending a ton of money. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so, Last question, and then you know, you know, and then we we can we'll we'll kind of we'll kind of close this out a little bit. Um, so I would say eight nine months. I can't remember the exact time frame that you've been in the agent role now. You know, you've been 
relatively successful. You know, you, you, you did really well last year, this year, I hope you don't mind me saying I'm, I'm, I'm kind of expecting you're going to make six, six figures this year. You know, I think all signs point to that, you know, in your personal income, mm -hmm. um, you're going to do really well, you know, and you've done exceptionally well. You know, I, I made a post in the Facebook group, um, back in, I think November or December about, you know, how quickly you hit a hundred clients mm -hmm. on the books, you know, and, and it was fast. It was like six months, five, six months, something like that. And so you've done really well, you know, since you've transitioned in that role, you've really, you know, done, done a tremendous job. And, you know, so credit to you on that, you know, you've, you've worked hard and learning and training and, you know, been, you've been very coachable. Like it's all, it's all you, you know, in terms of the the success you've had, but what do you feel like an agent needs to be successful no matter their role? Is there anything in particular that you've kind of learned over this past eight, nine months as an agent that you're like, okay, this is what an agent really does need to make, to kind of put the pieces together? Um, I think that to be a successful Medicare agent, you, the two biggest things <clears throat> is know your product and have a heart to serve. The whole reason I decided that Medicare was where I wanted to be is because I wanted to help people that didn't have someone to give them the guidance that they needed. Um, you know, I talk to people every day that are like, I spoke with this agent and they never mentioned anything about what you're telling me. Yep. And I'm like, how? Like, this is such basic stuff. How is this information not getting relayed? And I mean, I've been selling under you for less than a year and I've helped nearly what, 140 people. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's because I've, I've tried my best to learn the product so that when they have questions, I'm not just like, Oh, well, let me, let me see what I can do. It's, oh, no, I know this plan has these benefits. It's going to be really, you know, really helpful in your situation. And then I can go more into specifics and look it up and, and things like that. Um, steering them to the highest comp level product, that's not it. Yeah. You know, I had a client and <laughs> Christian got a little upset with me. <laughs> But I had a client that I completely forgot that the Aetna Silver Script um, PDP plan was not an agent commissionable plan. Right, right. And so, <laughs> you know, when I put the client's drugs in um, the comp tool and I was like, this plan covers everything really well and it's only this much per month. And then I go to write it and it's not coming up. And I'm like, why yeah. is this plan not coming up? Turns out it's, it's the, the Aetna plan that agents can't sell. So, you know, rather than being like, okay, well, this next plan down is $300 more per month on your drug cost, but I'm still going to get a commission. Yeah. I help them apply for the Aetna plan instead because that was what was in the best interest of the client. And yes. now I'm not going to steer everybody to the Aetna plan because then I'm just working for free and I don't want to do that either. But doing what is in their best interest is the key. You have to have their best, best interest in mind. So being a true resource, in my opinion, is what, you know, one of the things that makes a great agent. Yeah. Yeah. Being, I, I, being a, sort, a resource to your clients. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I've always said, you know, you do the right thing. Um, even if it's not always in your personal best interest is good business and it brings so much more back to you later. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the right way to do things. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's situations where we want to push people to a plant that maybe we can't do, you know, like in that situation. And that, that was a clear one. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's very good. Um, Thank you for doing this, by the way. I just wanted to, to to take a second to say that and, you know, and thank you for all you do. 
you know, for the company and for everything, you know, we're, we're very glad to have you as part of the family and, um, yeah, this was great. So I, I hope, I hope everybody, you know, um, got something out of this. You know, I, I, I really, you know, um, when, when I talked to Celeste about this at first, I was like, I was like, I think it would be a great idea to kind of highlight your growth and your success so far and, you know, and give people a different perspective, you know, on somebody that is building inside of the agency, you know, in a different yeah. role. Um, because, you know, everybody wants to talk about the agency owners, but by the numbers, the percentage of the agency owners is so small, you know, um, and so I, I think there's a lot of people, I, I do think there's a lot of people that are in the independent world that probably would do better in, in an LOA role. I really do think that, um, I don't know if it's stubbornness or, you know, yeah. pride or, or whatever, but, you know, yeah. I think there's a lot of people out there like that, you know, and yeah, I think, I think it's, I think, and, and I think as time goes on, you know, more regulations coming down the pike and things getting more expensive. I, I think it's only going to become more and more of a, a prevalent way, I think, to break into the industry. Um, Definitely. Well, awesome. Well, um, if it let's, let's say somebody watches this and they want to connect with you, Celeste, where's the best place for them to do that? Um, you can email me. Uh, my email is Celeste, C E L E S T E at eseniorins.com. Love it. Love it. Um, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, maybe you want to see more videos with people in our organization, you know, those kind of things. I'm sure we can make that happen. If you guys like this type of content, smash the like button. It's the only reason I'm going to know if you like it. Um, comment your thoughts down below. What do you think about this conversation? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, love to have a dialogue. Subscribe. We put out weekly videos to help you grow your business and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Here's to your success and your abundance. Thanks guys.